Hello, rascals and rough riders. My name is TB Sky, and welcome to Breath of the Wild Journeyman Mode. Now, if you want to know what Journeyman Mode means, then you can look in the description to see the arbitrary, completely invented rule set that I've decided to play by, or you can watch the introductory video at the top of the playlist for this particular gameplay series, where I spend about six minutes explaining each of the rules in detail and why I have implemented them for this particular playthrough. For our purposes, though, we are about to spend a couple of hours together in the world of Breath of the Wild's Hyrule in Master Mode, and there's no better way to get started than, well, to get started. Open your eyes. Open your eyes. Wake up, Link. Like all Zelda games, this one begins with Link waking up from a sleep. Although, this is a little bit different than you're used to, probably. God, the art direction in this game is so strong. Slate. Take it. It will help guide you after your long slumber. A mysterious tablet with a glowing center. You've never seen this device before, and yet there's something familiar about it. The funny thing about this is that Nintendo, generally speaking, loves to, as it were, personify their game mechanics in the game that you're playing. So, the famous example being the Lucky 2 in Super Mario 64, literally embodying this newfangled 3D camera thing that was completely new to the Super Mario franchise, or having Navi the fairy who tells you useful information about enemies also acting essentially as the game's said targeting system in Ocarina of Time. This is essentially the same thing in that Breath of the Wild was originally designed to be on the Wii U, and so it has what is essentially a Wii U handheld screen as an item available in the game. <laughs> and Fortunately for Nintendo, that translated okay onto the Nintendo Switch, which also has this sort of smartphone-y uh, form factor. But yeah, it's, it's one of those funny things. They do integrate it very well into the story, though. Because the Sheikah Slate is essentially magic tech. Like, it's, 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 it's an 
it's some technology that can do some randomly nebulously defined magic stuff. And for those purposes, um, it's like perfect. Because 20 or 30 years ago, a sort of magic tech thing would probably have been some incomprehensible remote control like thing or some sonic Doctor Who screwdriver kind of situation. Um, but in 2018, 17, when the heck did Breath of the Wild come out? It must have been a while ago, or maybe I'm being confused by the interminable length of this hell year. But when the game came out, like, the visual aesthetic of a magic tech thing was a smartphone. Like, that's, it, it's the natural thing to shape it after when we're dealing with, like, magic technology that can seemingly do anything through the use, like, through a single device with a touch screen. And it's just interesting to see that recontextualized as ancient technology from the long ago before times, rather than futuristic technology from the long ahead, you may never live to see at times. Hold the Sheikah Slate up to the pedestal. That will show you the way. Like the thing that Link just did, the gesture, it's essentially NFC communication, like scanning an amiibo, or if you have your credit card on your mobile phone these days, like paying with your credit card in a shop via your phone. the light our light that must shine upon high rule once again now go and the last bit of tutorial teaching you how to climb up walls probably the most important thing that link can do in this game from a mobility perspective and then one of the most breathtaking scenes I've ever seen in any video game. At least I remember the first time I saw what's about to happen. It took my breath away. And that's not an intentional pun. The way that this game guides you, by the way, is absolutely masterful. Like, we get this big shot, this big epic vista of Hyrule, which, designing this, must have taken so long to get the whole world map of Hyrule to line up in a way that, like, you can see Death Mountain over here, you can see those split cliffs over there, that mountain with a weird hole in its side, in the Gerudo Desert over there, and sometimes when you're looking this direction, you will see one of the divine beasts passing overhead, so that even if you just stand here and look around, you can see so much of the world and the adventure that's about to reveal itself to you, and then the camera zooms in on the old man down there, and then when you come back around and you're allowed to start moving again, one of the first things you see is the little glowy light reflecting off the branch lying there on the ground your very first weapon. Wooden branches such as this are pretty common, but it's surprisingly well balanced. It doesn't do much damage, but it can serve as a weapon in a pinch. Indeed it can, although because we are playing on master mode right now, <laughs> wooden branches are functionally useless. You, you quite literally can't kill anything with one of these. These, on the other hand, a common mushroom found near trees around Hyrule 
eat it to restore half a heart are going to be substantially more useful. So, maybe I should explain what Master Mode does. What Master Mode does is essentially it levels up all enemies by one level. So, red enemies, which are usually the weakest ones. Oh, didn't mean to do that. I meant to do this. Red enemies that are usually the weakest ones become blue enemies, which are like a order of magnitude more powerful. This beetle's razor-sharp horns demand that you handle it with care. Boil the horns alongside monster parts to concoct an elixir that will raise your attack power. This is going to be important if I want to fight anything on the plateau, because without that power boost, killing anything becomes incredibly difficult here. And indeed everywhere. I'm just going to grab myself a few more beetles. But yeah, all enemies are upgraded by one power level, essentially. Which means at the start of the game, I am functionally incapable of killing anything right now. Um, like, well, well, it's not true. Think. Think. Head for the point marked on the map in your Sheikah Slate. <laughs> I will, Zelda, I will. We'll get to you. I've got my own stuff going on. <laughs> um... What was I saying? Right, it is. I, there are plenty of ways to kill enemies. Like I, I don't want to make this out like it's it's fully impossible for me to kill anything, but it's diff, like you can't fight them like normal. And for quite a while, I just wasn't able to even play master mode because I didn't quite understand what this version of the game expects me to do about enemies, even here on the plateau. Eventually, as you go through the game, you'll power up enough. Thank you. That, um, you're not going to have any trouble. But at the start, it can be quite difficult. Hello. <laughs> oh, well met, stranger. It's rather unusual to see another soul in these parts. Who are you? Me? I'll spare you my life story. I'm just an old fool who has lived here, alone, for quite some time now. What brings a bright-eyed young man like you to a place like this? Where are we? Answering a question with a question? That is fair enough. As I cannot imagine our meeting to be a simple coincidence, I shall tell you. This is the Great Plateau. According to legend, this is the birthplace of the entire kingdom of Hyrule. A familiar temple? Hmm. That temple there. Long ago, it was the site of many sacred ceremonies. Ever since the decline of the kingdom a hundred years ago, it has sat abandoned in a state of decay. Hmm. Yet another forgotten entity. A mere ghost of its former self. I shall be here for some time. Please let me know if I may be of service. Hmm. Yes? What are you doing? Oh. I'm relaxing by the fireside, of course. Although I'll need to cook myself another baked apple at some point. Simple foods such as apples are fine to eat raw, but roasting them on a fire makes them tastier and more nutritious. Which is true. There's an apple on the ground there, but it's his apple, and because we're playing with a no-stealing rule, we can't pick up that, the torch, or indeed the axe down here, um, which are all his things. So we'll have to find ourselves another way. Now, the first enemy of the game is going to be down here somewhere. Ooh, but I have a thing I want to do first. Huh? You're not Hester? But you can see me? I didn't know you can could see the children of the forest. Well, if you're not in Testo, please return this to him. I will, little friend. Oh, and my friends are hiding in lots of different places, too. Don't be shy about poking your nose into suspicious places. I will, little friend. I will. So, if at all possible, I'd like to catch a couple of fish. And also, oh hey, a sword stuck in a stone. Surely this will be the legendary Master Sword. 
no, it's just rusty. But it does allow us to get rid of this. Which we shall not need. Now, let's see. Here, fishy fishies. not going to get another one. So when you whistle, you scare fish away from you in a straight line. And with a little bit of finesse, you can sometimes even scare them up onto the shore, uh, which can be a useful and easy way to fish for them. Another way to fish is to fish by diving. Catch sight of them from above. And grab them as you land. Like so. Thank you very much. I need two, I think. And then we'll need some meat, and we'll need some chili. Right then. Our first enemy of the game is over here. And I might as well show you. <laughs> and there we go. My broadsword is gone. And because we're playing on master mode, he's going to start regenerating health uh, pretty quickly. The moment you stop attacking him, he starts regenerating. Which is a problem, um, because right now... Since I only have that rusty sword, which is gone now, and tree branches, which barely do any damage with his health pool, I am simply not capable of killing him at the moment, unfortunately. So we'll just run away, which fortunately isn't a problem. And while we're here, might as well gather some ancient springs and see if we can catch a frog down here. Doesn't look like it. Okay, fair enough. But yeah, fortunately, these enemies can just be ignored and run away from. Which is good, because uh, they'll kill me in two hits. <laughs> ah, some proper pants. That'll help me be a little bit more. I think that'll let me survive three hits from them. So that's nice. La -da -da -dee. Say hello to the Temple of Time. If you've played Ocarina of Time, you know the significance of that. La -da -da -dee. Can't remember if there's anything else in here. I don't think so. But there are some pots, or at least the yeah, couple of them around back here. No, throw it. Link. Oh, right, R1. It's been a while since I've played. Nice arrows, just what I was looking for. best bet for actually killing enemies is to get a hold of a half-decent bow and then land consecutive headshots on them. Which is easier said than done, especially here on the plateau. Whoa. Yeah, three hits I can survive. 
But I don't have a shield, so I kind of need to... Ooh, amber. Excellent. That's a bit of early money. We'll need those springs and stuff later. Right, so... Another thing that's added in Master Mode... That guy. That right there is a white or silver Lionel. I can't remember which is which it is. It's one of the most powerful enemies you can encounter in the game. And he's just hanging out here. <laughs> being an absolute terrifying menace. He's another one of those enemies, I think... Speedrunners can probably kill him. I'm sure they have their ways, but for us, it is still a bit of a bridge too far, and it will be until quite late in the game. Apologies to whichever bird whose children I just killed. So, normally you're supposed to be able to kill these buckhoplins by rolling down that boulder from up on the platform, exploding the barrels, setting them on fire, and doing a ton of damage. Because they're blue buckhoplins, however, they will survive that attack. <laughs> the bastards. Let's gather some arrows, shall we? These guys are gonna see me in just a second. Very good. And I'm gonna take advantage of that by picking up some of the arrows that they shoot into the ground. Which you can only do a certain number of times, unfortunately. Ah, damn it. I still have my Harul Warriors reflexes on. So what I want here is I want a headshot on this guy. There. Because then... I can get myself a shield, which is nice. He doesn't like that. And there we go. Arrow to the head. Best way to kill. Sweet. The thing about master mode is you don't want to try and kill multiple enemies at the same time unless you're doing it with, like, spin attacks. Because you'll run afoul of the regeneration. There we go. That'll do the trick. Let's go activate a Sheikah Tower, shall we? So we can see what we're doing. Please watch for falling rocks.
man, the filmic framing of that scene, like just the towers rising out of the ground in various parts of the world, it's gorgeous. Distilling local information. Literally distilling it into a drop. <laughs> Regional map extracted. Which, by the way, is everywhere in the conception of um, technology. Of Zelda's lullaby in the music cue there. Oh, people gave this game sh uh, crap for not having very much of the traditional Zelda music, which is to say the loud, bombastic fanfares and the overworld map theme and stuff. I think the music in this game is so perfect, so beautiful, just so perfectly suited to the mood of this game. This big, giant, and let's be honest, mostly empty open world. Like, when you get right down to it, mostly in Breath of the Wild, <laughs> there isn't anything there. It's just a, a, like a bump map, a bunch of rolling hills with trees and stuff scattered all over it, but no NPCs, no quests, no people to talk to, no nothing. There's a meadow, by the way, floating around over there. It's just... It's just empty. But the music sells it. Anyway, I was talking about technology, so... Look at, well, I can't really point with the cursor, but look at the way the interface, like there, there's all these little waves of like light in these like unexplored areas, right? That sort of flow across the surface of the tablet and then the top of the bottom, you get these wavering patterns, like the pattern of light at the bottom of a pool. Technology in this game is very deeply identified with water imagery, which is a, like which is interesting because like mostly tech nowadays is neon lights and like electricity and stuff. But here, because it's ancient technology, it's it's sort of conceptualized with a completely different natural element, which I thought was very cool. Anyway, time to get down from here. And because rocks have blocked off most of it, there is only one way down, which is wee, wee, and wee, and wee. Whoa. Okay, that was a little close. Nice and gentle, nice and slow. Once we're in a distance where we can't take damage, you can actually just jump down any way you want, and the same cutscene will still trigger, which is this one. And there's a clue to the identity of the old man, by the way, just in the music that plays when he shows up. And if you can finish that little scale, that little series of notes that plays, you know who he is. My, my, it would seem we have quite the enigma here. This tower, and others just like it, have erupted across the land one after another. It is almost as though a long dormant power has awoken quite suddenly. If you do not mind me asking, did anything odd occur while you were atop that tower? I heard a voice. Well, now, a voice, you say. 
Uh, did you happen to recognize this mysterious voice? No. Hmm. I see. Well, that is unfortunate. I assume you caught sight of that atrocity enshrouding the castle. Hmm. That is Calamity Ganon. One hundred years ago, that vile entity brought the kingdom of Hyrule to ruin. It appeared suddenly and destroyed everything in its path. So many innocent lives were lost in its wake. For a century, the very symbol of our kingdom, Hyrule Castle, has managed to contain that evil, but just barely. There it festers, building its strength for the moment it will unleash its blight upon the land once again. It would appear that moment is fast approaching. Hmm. I must ask you, courageous one, do you intend to make your way to the castle? I do. <laughs> I had a feeling you'd say that. Here, at this isolated plateau, we are surrounded on all sides by steep cliffs with no way down. If you were to try to jump off, well, no death could be more certain or more foolish. Oh. Of course, if you had a paraglider like mine, that would be quite another story. Paraglider? Oh, piqued your interest, have I? Yes, I didn't come soaring down here on my own feathery wings, you know. Mm. Worry not, I will happily agree to give you my paraglider. But not for nothing. Mm. Let's see now. How about I trade it for a bit of treasure that slumbers nearby? Huh. Come, let me show you something. Do you see that structure there? The one shining with a strange light? It began glowing at the exact moment those towers rose up from the ground. <laughs> I would think such a place might house some sort of treasure, wouldn't you? Treasure for the paraglider. A fair exchange, I believe. All right, old man. You're on. First, fish. Thank you. And then, trouble. Let's see now. Into the water you go. Okay. Just gonna snipe them out. Coblins don't do well in water. Damn it. There we go. So that's an easy way to get rid of them. Which is good. What am I fighting? Ah, oh, so just the balloons that are angry at me. And the reason to kill those is because they have these. Spiked Boko Bows. An upgraded Boko Bow bound with animal bone to boost its durability and firepower. Its craftsmanship is sloppy, but it's light and easy to use. Which is a doubling of our attack power from before, which will finally let us actually do some proper combat damage to these bastards. Rather than just having to snipe them all the time. Thank you. So, if we'd been caught in combat with those things, those octopus balloons would have raised up off the water, make, making it really hard to get to the treasure chest, which would be annoying. Ooh, that's a good one. And the fire arrows. Excellent. Lovely haul. Albeit, I will need to get rid of one of the boko bones, which I can't do while I'm in the water. Oops. Thank you. 
And with that, we should be able to take on the Bacoblins over here, so long as there isn't a more powerful one among them. There isn't, it looks like. That's good. Gotcha. They have something like 40 HP, I believe. Thank you. I hope there's something good in there. Something worth the trouble. Traveler sword. Not really useful for anything in this version of the game. Thank you. Guardians are straight up monstrous um, in master mode. Incredibly difficult to kill. So gathering guardian parts from dead and defunct guardians is worth the time, at least I think, in terms of being able to get a hold of some guardian weapons um, that will help you take out those guys. Let's see if we can grab one from the submerged one over here. No? No, not so much. Okay. Let's go clear the first shrine of the game. <laughs> Here's one of the pre-order bonuses or download DLC things, which is a ruby, which is again going to be useful for money. She can slate confirmed. Travel gate register to map. Unfortunately, we will not be allowed to use them. Access granted. In future, I might skip some of the cutscenes for the shrines, but not right now. To you set foot in this shrine, I am Omen Ao. In the name of the goddess Hylia, I offer this trial. Shika Slate Authenticated. Distilling Rune. That's the first one. Rune extracted. There go. Please climb out of there. <laughs> Ah, 
Ah, here's a problem. The little guardians in the shrines. If you're playing on master mode, initially you may find it nigh on impossible to kill them <laughs> on the Great Plateau because they too have had their health massively increased. Let's see, don't remember if there's anything useful in here, but let's have a look. Hmm, not really. But we need to pick it up in order to get the completion on the shrine, like the full completion, so drop the Picotlin bow, take this one instead. Again, water imagery. Droplet sounds, you know. You have proven to possess the resolve of a true hero. I am Omenau, creator of this trial. I am a humble monk, blessed with the sight of God is highly and dedicated to helping those who seek to defeat Ganon. With your arrival, my duty is now fulfilled. In the name of Goddess Hylia, allow me to bestow this gift upon you. Please accept this spirit orb. A symbol of courage given to those who have overcome the challenges of a shrine. May the goddess smile upon you. So notice that he's holding his hands in a triangular shape there. you managed to get your hands on a spirit orb. Well done. How did you know? Hmm. Clairvoyance! <laughs> or, or perhaps just something similar. As one gets older, it can become more difficult to see what is right before one's own, eye, one's own eyes. Which is such a clever little joke he's playing on Link. However, that which was once hidden from you can often be crystal clear. <laughs> But perhaps that is not true for everyone. <laughs> the appearance of those towers and the awakening of the shrine. Hmm. It is all connected to that Sheikah slate you carry on your hip there. What do you mean? Hmm. It has been quite some time since I've seen that Sheikah slate. Long ago, a highly advanced tribe known as the Sheikah inhabited these lands. The great power of their wisdom saved this kingdom time and time again. But their ancient technology disappeared long ago, or so it is said. It is interesting, however, to think how something like that survived all this time, hidden away in a shrine. Hmm. These shrines are tucked away in numerous places all across this land. On this plateau alone, I believe there are still three more. <laughs> Bring me the treasure from each of those shrines, and I will give you my paraglider. So I need more now? I said treasure, but I never said there would be only one treasure. Whether it's one treasure or four, what's the difference for a young go-getter like yourself? Since I'm feeling generous, I will also teach you a trick for finding shrines. It's always best to survey the area by looking around from a high point. Uh, let's see here. How about you make your way to the top of that tower again? Got it. <laughs> I admire your eagerness, but allow me to teach you something else before you go. Take a look at the map on your Sheikah slate. Oh. See those blue icons? You should recognize the cave where you woke, the shrine you came from, and the tower. 
You can travel instantly to any of those places with the Sheikah Slate. Hmm. Or so I heard quite some time ago. I do not know if it actually works as such. Oh, don't you? Well, we got one thing or two that I want to do down here first, though. Get some arrows. Or whatever happens to be in the boxes. That is random. Get some amber. Get an opal. I can just barely reach that box, right? Yeah. Darn. Usually that's enough to break them. There we go. Right, so because it's part of the story, we're going to do the teleportation here. surprised it took you so long to catch up with an old man like me. Did you fly here? <laughs> so you think an old man like me needs to fly to stay ahead of you? I still have a few tricks left in me. Ah, then. I wanted you to join me up here so you could use this as a vantage point to search for shrines. Did you know about the scope on your Sheikah slate? Look through it and you can stick a pin anywhere you'd like to mark on the map. Hmm. The pins on your map serve as reference points for your travels. Just stick a pin anywhere you're interested in. How do you know? Oh, <laughs> just a few tricks I've picked up after many, many years in the wild. You may take my advice or leave it. Go ahead and take a look, if you feel inclined to do so. And so we will. Just for the fun of it. And pin... And pin. And pin. Not that we need to, but... <laughs> no, I've got him. Alright, and then we teleport back down. And continue with our journey. Sometimes teleporting very short distances can actually be sh uh, slower because it just takes you to a loading screen and then there's a whole, like, there's the cutscenes of you, like, disappearing and reappearing. But it does respawn the boxes, so that's something. Oh, break. Hmm. Nothing in them, though. Oh, right, that doesn't regenerate. This over here. That uh, muddy swamp there. Don't want to step in that. <laughs> yep. Look at will come in handy.
day. Now, we need some meat. Which means we need to locate ourselves a hog. Oh, acorn. Also good. Those are just pacapons, they're not just ooh, lizard. A lizard found throughout Hyrule. It is a bit slow to react at times, but if given a chance to escape, it will dart off quickly. Cook it with monster parts for a speed boosting elixir. Yes. Right then, what's the easiest way? There's some frogs. A quick frog that can be found hopping around near water. Cook it with monster parts to draw out its speed boost effect. Indeed. So time, by the way, on the Great Plateau doesn't begin to pass until after you, I believe, activate the first shrine? Oh, oh well. So we meet again. What are you doing? My back is aching. I clearly need to take a little break. Say, courageous one, are you hungry? If so, please feel free to use my cooking pot to whip up a snack. If you need to start a fire, just light your torch in a, that campfire over there. Got any tips? Simply open your inventory, grab hold of your ingredients, and toss them in. So, since he has given us permission... We're going to grab the torch. Which is good, because those are actually much more important than you might think. And... Go. Lit his fire for him there. Not going to take the traveler's bow, because we didn't get permission for that one. Oh, there you are. Need to get a headshot though. So where is your little head? Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting boars. Ah! Uh, darn it! It's gonna scare off all the other ones. That's fine. I got the meat I wanted. Speaking of which... These fireflies glow gently in the dark. When cooked with monster parts, the compound that causes it to glow will result in an elixir that will allow you to move more quietly. Which is also very useful. Oh. Dang it. Ah. These guys, fortunately, don't get a power boost from Master Mode. Albeit they're still troublesome. A rare material dropped by a defeated case. It's fun to look at, but it doesn't seem to have much use at first glance. But it must be good for something. I probably won't read all of the item descriptions. Right, what was I doing? Oh yes. I've done my hunting. Now I just need chili. Or hot peppers, rather. Go. 
There's some Koroks yet to find here. Uh, which reminds me, one of the ways to find one of those Koroks involves a bit of fire. Over there. generally a good idea to gather as many seeds as you can as early as possible. Now let us do a bit of... Oh, the fire went out. Dun, 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 dun. Hold one of those. And let's see, where are you? Rhino-bladed beetle. There. Let's sort that. There we go. Mighty elixir. Bit of a power boost. That's going to be useful. Yeah, yeah. I'm done hunting now. Don't worry. Ooh, beetle. Beetle, beetle, beetle. Hello. Thank you. And another cork. Lovely. Not seeing any lizards around. That's unfortunate. I kind of want a speed elixir. Because even though we're taking our time in this playthrough, we're not taking that much of our time. That should be the last shot from this bow. Yeah. I'll just... Oh no, the bees see me. They see me. They're making a beeline for me. Go away. I just want the honey. So, there is a Talus down there, which is a mini-boss, that we have oh, absolutely no chance of beating right now. Mine. We'll need these fireflies for upgrade materials a little bit later. <sighs> Darn it. Stop scaring them off, you jerks. Silent mushroom, that's good. Let's see, Pacoplin's over there. Don't want to fight those without a good reason. I guess let's just go climb that tower over there and then make our way to the second shrine and get moving on that a little bit. So my worry about this series is that much of what I'm going to be doing during it isn't going to be the world's most compelling gameplay because, well, this is the stuff I like about Breath of the Wild. Running around, climbing slowly up things, gathering stuff in the wilderness. The quiet. That's what I like about Breath of the Wild. Which does make for an unexciting <laughs> playthrough of the game. But I know that that's something that some people like, 
actually. So, here's hoping. This doesn't have to get a lot of views for me to feel like it's worth it. And whoop. Thank you. Can I jump down yet? No, not yet. There. Right, so over here, the game introduces us to one of the, well, a couple of the systems in the game. Which is wind and fire. First, it gives you access to some branches. Then you can set that branch on fire. And then you can throw that branch into the tall grass. And then you watch the magic. <laughs> These are the kinds of sort of emergent systemic types of gameplay uh, that the game got praised for quite a lot upon its release. Albeit, it doesn't give you that many opportunities um, to specifically abuse the elemental effects. Of course, if that Bacoblin had been red, uh, this would have straight up killed it. <laughs> but it isn't, so it doesn't. Well, we'll just kill you manually then. Oh, my bow died. There we go. He doesn't have anything useful to us. And there's nothing useful to us in that Bacoblin layer. Not on this difficulty mode. But yeah, the Great Plateau is full of those. Those little showcases. Those little moments where the game, like, shows off what you can do with its physics interactions and its engines. If I remember correctly, is one of the DLC things out here somewhere on the battlements? Nope. Or is that in another location? It doesn't really matter, they're not important. But if I was going to walk by them anyway, I might as well grab them, right? Healthy I Hyrule herbs. Nah, it's gone. Anyway, more physics uh, nonsense. This, on the other hand, can actually kill higher power Pacoplans because. The physics engine does a variable amount of damage, um, depending on how fast an object is moving. Ideally, I would like to have enough Korok seeds pretty early that we can get Hestu back to Korok Forest without incident. And also upgrade our inventory early. Because the restrictions I've put on myself here... <laughs> about not using the inventory, uh, or not upgrading the inventory too much. They are pretty, like, it... It does cut down a lot on how much stuff you can just be lugging around. I think you get, like, what is it, six or seven upgrades before Hestu goes back to Korok Forest. Most of which I'm gonna want to put into melee weapons and 
the rest into bows. Shields, unfortunately, I'm going to be stuck with, like, a very low number of slots for most of the game. Which is fine, because shields don't break that often, especially if you parry well. Like, they don't take damage when you successfully parry an attack. And I don't parry that well most of the time, but I have gotten quite good at parrying guardian lasers. Although, it's been a while since I played the game, so those skills may have atrophied. <laughs> My headshot skills, at least, are still intact. Let's see, I want those damn chili peppers. They're up here somewhere. Another long climb, another long climb. The draw distance on this game, by the way, is really impressive considering it's a Switch game. I have to imagine they're using all kinds of technical wizardry under the hood to make that possible. I mean, certainly this game doesn't have the most complex polygons in the world, and the textures are generally pretty low memory, which is probably how they do it. Let's try not to get ourselves killed falling off of something. Right, there's the peppers. There they are. This pepper is exploding with spice. Cook it to create dishes that will raise your body temperature and help you withstand the cold. Very useful. Danke schön. We'll grab a stamella shroom while we're at it too. So this camp really isn't dangerous, um, because none of the bacoblins up there will, will actually do anything. But what is dangerous is the black bacoblin that you see there. That guy is actually a major problem. I can't kill him. Well, mm, no, I can. I can throw him in the water and he'll die. Uh-oh. Right. It already gets cold here. Don't want to take that damage, so we're just going to run around. Kind of tempted just to use the cooking pot down there and ignore the goblins. <laughs> That's a little dangerous because it doesn't take a lot of hits from the black ones to kill you. Get a summer wing. They have a cooking pot down there, don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do. Yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> no, not that one. There goes my shield, because of the fire. And my broadsword isn't lasting much longer, so... And neither is my bow. Oh, dear. There we go. A little tougher than I want it. Damn it. 
break. If you accidentally drop one of those on your own head, or if it hits the edge of the other uh, crate and bounces off, it will kill you. <laughs> Pretty much in one hit. Hold those, and the chili, and that should do the trick. Spicy meat and seafood fry. That's what I was looking for. That's why I needed the fish and the meat. But what exactly? Oh, you'll see. I'd rather not simply retrace my steps, so... We'll go around the long way. Butterflies, butterflies. Be mine, little butterflies. Recognize this place? <laughs> We've come full circle, my friends. Can't remember if you can do this here, but let's talk to him. Oh, I was just feeling a chill. A warm fire can do wonders for a weary soul. A campfire is a wonderful place to pass the time. Staring into these flames, it's easy to lose track of the hours. Ah, please ignore my ramblings. Feel free to relax here for as long as you like. Nope, we can't. Okay, cool. We need him to be sitting at a cooking pot before he'll trigger the thing I'm looking for. And what's the best place to do that? Well, probably over by his house, actually. Which means we need to go carefully past the silver Lionel. Or rather, entirely around it. We're not even going to get close to it. <laughs> Absolutely not. Come on. Get down here. Gotcha. Okay, Mr. Lionel. I don't remember exactly what your aggro range is, but I seem to remember it's quite far. So, taking this a little carefully. Yeah, it's really far, actually. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sneak, 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 sneak. Sneaky, sneaky, sneak. I am very sneaky. You do not see he sees me. Get in the grass, Link. Get in the grass. He's not necessarily going to attack um, just because he sees me, but he can, and we do not wish th for that to happen ever because it's very bad. Okay, sneak successful. Let's go to the old man's cabin. Ooh, we might want to... Maybe. I seem to remember there's bomb arrows down there. Or is that over on the other side over here? Eh, either way. Hello, old man. 
Oh, fancy that. So we meet again. What are you doing? Oh, I thought this tree here might make some good firewood. However, getting a tree to fall exactly where you want it is quite an art. The trick is to turn your hips so that they face where you want the tree to land. Ooh. It's best to use an axe when felling trees. A sword works in a pinch, but you'll end up ruining the blade. <sighs> yes, I'm a bit busy right now, as you can see. Uh huh. Good. Be done. Be done cutting down trees. No? Not until it gets dark. Fair enough. The old man's diary. Let's be naughty. On this desolate plateau, the only pleasure that brings me comfort is cooking. And today I did myself. Truly, I created the perfect dish. I call it spicy meat and seafood fry. This recipe not only restores health, but it also keeps me warm, even when traveling in the snowy mountains. With this dish on my side, I no longer have need of that itchy warm duplet. I do not know how I like this to happen, but it seems I forgot to write down a very important recipe. I know it contained raw meat and spicy pepper, however. I simply cannot remember what else I used. My age is catching up to me. Sadly, on this lonely plateau, I have only my own knowledge and memory to rely on, still. If I did find someone who knew the missing ingredient, I would happily reward them with my warm duplet. However, it seems unlikely that such a miraculous wish will ever be fulfilled. What a conspicuous thing to say. Okay, old man, get over here. Nothing to do but wait for him. <laughs> I did say that this playthrough was going to be quite slow. Uh, what else can we do in the meantime? Well, can't pick up any of that stuff because it's not ours to pick up. Well, we can go trying for the bomb arrows. Kind of don't want to ruin the sword on that. I might need the extra damage of the crit, but... Uh, Physics engine. I do love that Link has a little special animation for doing that kind of thing. <laughs> Where he runs carefully. Gyro aiming is good, but it could be a lot better. There's <laughs> my fallen arrow. Let's see, I can't remember if I need bombs. I do. God damn it. There's a treasure chest behind that wall over there. I just forgot the wall was there. Darn, bit of a waste. It's not an important treasure, I just thought it would be something to do while the old man walked. We need that warm duplet. Or duble, or however the heck you pronounce that, I don't actually know. Oh, there are a few things as delightful as a roaring fire. What are you doing? This body of mine isn't what it used to be. Recovering from a bout of hard work takes a while. If you're hungry, I have an empty cooking pot that you can use to cook yourself a meal. I cooked something. Whoa, wait, is that... That looks just like my signature perfect dish. Spicy meat and seafood fry. But how did you... Well, I suppose that is not important. Can I trouble you to share the recipe? <laughs> of course, Hyrule Bass. How could I have forgotten? Well done. Now, please allow me to reward your culinary efforts with this warm duplet. Thank you. Cold resistance. Oh, it suits you quite well. Thank you. That was literally all I wanted. <laughs> okay. Shrine time. Time for shrine. And wouldn't you know it, conveniently there's one right up there. Can't climb that far yet, though. Let's 
So we'll have to walk up there. Oh yes, hello. Goddamn Bacoblin. He's gonna see me. I just want the rush room. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember what that melody is. Why is it in my head? Whoop. And that should just about get us up there. And then, uh, this wall. Ugh. Just ignore them. Just ignore them and they'll go away. Eventually. <laughs> Throwing rocks at me, though. Yeah. Anyway, here's why I, w why I wanted the dupla. Because, uh, kind of needed to get around here. So the thing about Breath of the Wild is that you can follow um, the obvious paths that are laid out, or you can just go off on your own and climb literally any direction that you want. Um, and as a player, after about, you know, I mean 150, 200 hours playing this game, I've, I've played this game for a damn long time, I just get so used to ignoring the roads completely, like taking the more as kind of suggestions. <laughs> Oh, right, it was over there. And I really kind of, with this playthrough, I kind of want to travel by the paths more, because those paths were created by Nintendo, like they were curated to be good and interesting. And so I, I, really, I really need to break the habit of just climbing, <laughs> climbing everything with all the little tips and tricks that I've picked up over time. There are so many places on most surfaces, like on most sheer climbs on mountains, where you can find enough of a foothold just to stand and recover, like, enough uh, stamina that you can keep climbing. And it's so easy to exploit. None of that equipment is useful. By the way, um, the game design function of those Bokoblins, uh, stealth Bokoblins, rather, is to always give you a source of equipment that is easily accessible to you. Because you can kill those with bombs, which are like the, the runes that you get. And then they will give you access to like some basic weaponry that they've got, which will then let you kill more powerful enemies for their weapon. Like so that you're never like that you're never completely out of options. Which is all over the game. Like these little things. For you that's foot in this shrine, I'm Oadai. In the name of the goddess highly I offer this trial. So that you're never completely out of luck if you are in need of weapons from somewhere in order to do things. Which is one of the things I think that people have missed about Breath of the Wild. Like, especially with this weapon and equipment durability thing. That part of the point of that is to ensure that you stop seeing weapons as permanent. Which is like common. Like, this is one of the most common complaints I heard from people is, like, it's really annoying to go into some place and fight an epic monster and get a really powerful weapon, like a, like a flame sword or some super strong late game weapon, and then be feel anxiety about it <clears throat> because you know that if you use it on anything, like, you, no matter what you're hitting, whether you're hitting a Lionel or the simplest of Bokoblins, it will decrease in durability and it'll eventually break. And that's... I felt that too, and so much of my first playthrough was just pumping all of my, like, my uh, equipment upgrades into weapons so I could have as many of them as humanly possible. Um, 
so that I'd never run out. And then what I would usually do is I'd get one or two really common weapons, like like weapons that you, you don't really prioritize, that you don't really need for anything. And I just use those to kill everything. And I would just run around with these super powerful weapons in my inventory that I would never use on anything except maybe a Lionel. And I, I, I was just like, for most of the game, I was just lugging around these powerful weapons that I never did anything with. They never did anything to like improve my gameplay experience or or like, or to be fun. Like I never got to have the experience of being overpowered as it were. Um, which is one of the things that I kind of wanted, that I ended up learning to push back against, which is like, no, you know what? I know exactly where to find a fire weapon if I need it. I know exactly where to go. Um, If I want, like, literally any kind of weapon that I can think of, I know where to get it and how to get it. And so weapons are not, and they respawn with every single blood moon, so weapons are not permanents. Only the Master Sword is permanent. They are resources that you should use the same way that you use food or potions or, like, any consumable. Which is admittedly a very different ethos from the rest of Legend of Zelda and from fantasy. Your resourcefulness in overcoming this trial speaks to the promise of a hero. Note the upside-down triangle position that he's holding his hand in. The effects animation in this game is so gorgeous. Like, look how pretty that is. But yeah, that's also part of the point of having the limited inventory, is to ensure that I don't hoard, like, that I can't hoard, that I, like, there is no option to keep a crappy weapon with me to kill enemies with because I, I don't want to use my powerful, like, royal greatsword or whatever. I have to pick up weapons that are the most powerful that I can get my hands on, and then I have to use them to kill things. That's just the way it's gonna have to go. And hopefully, it will work. Anyway, back here again. Let's go get the other shrine that's up here. I do believe that those guys are sleeping, though, so... Just gonna sneaky sneak my sneaky little way. <laughs> he hurt his hand opening the chest. And move along. So, I want most of the episodes of this series to be two hours long-ish, something along those lines. But I think the first episode will be however long it takes me to conquer the, uh, the central plateau. I think we'll just, ooh, that's a black mobblin, can't beat that. I can throw it off the mountain though. That would probably, it might kill it. Uh-oh, excuse me. Or I can ignore it. <laughs> it doesn't have a weapon or a bow, so it's not going to follow me that long. And we're at an hour and a half already on this episode, so might be two hours and something before I'm completely done up here. I'm going to try not to get too distracted by a million things, although that is very much the ethos of the game. Grab that arrow, thank you very much. I do believe I have enough apples to... yeah.
Dun, dun, dun. Guess who's here? <laughs> Somehow. Mm, the fierce cold atop these mountains can take quite a toll as the night sits in. Oh, breathtaking view. Oh, this may be the best place to get a full view of the entire plateau. Use your scope to look for shrines. When you locate one, place a pin on your map as a marker. Nah. But I will grab the amber from underneath this marker up here. And over there is the shrine that we're looking for. Probably shouldn't jump from here, though. That would be bad. We can jump down here, though. And shimmy our way down. balls. Anyway, just gonna ignore you guys unless you have good weapons. You don't. Ow. Not worth my time or trouble. Stop. Ah, God damn it! They don't usually follow me all the way up here. Oh well. Not that it matters. Bye. Thank you very much. Lot of Come on, that hit it in its eye. What the hell? Man, I know I hit it in the eye. I know I did. What the heck? Yeah, see? Jerk. Gotta open that one to get completion. Even if the item in there is useless. Kinda. Uh, it kinda reminds me of... Uh, remember Half-Life? and Half-Life 2, how enamored those games are with their own physics engines. Yeah, it kind of feels like that sometimes.
Thank you. Right, let's go grab the treasure chest down there. Don't remember if there's anything useful in it, but I want it out of principle. Ooh. Frozen water here, or the icy cold water will kill you real quick. Okay, cool. So, now we need to get back down again. That's not the way. Extremely Mandalorian voice. This is. Whoop. Yeah, yeah, I know I said stuff about paths and stuff earlier, but they lead past the Cotlands, and that's personally inconvenient to me right now. So. We'll just skip a little bit of the path and then join the path on another place. your head. There it is. Lovely. Any good weapons? Oh, yes. Shock arrows. Ah, can I get it? Don't fall in. Whew. So all these floating platforms aren't really in the in the, the normal version of the game. Well, they they exist here and there, but a lot of them are added in master mode with enemies that like will spot you and fly up into the sky and start shooting at you from really annoying angles. Um. And they also have the added benefit, like from a game design perspective, that those enemies will usually have powerful upgraded weapons of various kinds. Oh, I need your jelly, actually. Thank you. Um, they will often have powerful upgraded um weapons in their chests, or they'll be carrying them. Like, that's why those Bacoplins I fought in the water earlier on uh, at the start of the episode. That's why they had these spiked Bacoplin bows when nothing else up here has levels, uh, weapons of that power level. And again, that's to help you be able to actually deal with the enemies in the game, because they are all of them um, generally much more powerful than they were in the base game. I kind of don't think I need the soldier's bow for that. Or the spiked bow. It's basically to help you deal um, with the enemies that you face in master mode, so that you like have a chance in hell. <laughs> hmm, I could probably snipe that guy into the water, couldn't I? With a good hit from a distance. Yeah, that works. Yep. 
Oh, I missed this bow. Looks that way. My inventory is not full. Shut up. Oh no, it's there. I just can't get at it right now. Okay. Uh, carefully. One viable strategy for getting across this area without, um, without having any, uh, like, heat resistance or coat resistance at all is to basically, you can use a bundle of wood to make an impromptu campfire that you can warm yourself at so you can create these little fire stations along the route. Um, especially if you have fire arrows, but any source of fire. And that can be a helpful way to handle that. Which is one of the wonderful ways that the game sort of empowers you to, you know, do your own thing. And beat the game however you want. Okay. Yeah, straight ahead, and we'll get to the final shrine. Albeit, we may have to be careful of the Lionel. angry, always, as Lionels tend to be. I think I could snipe him from here. <laughs> Make him angry. Uh, bad idea, though. Don't notice me. Just stay angry over there instead of being angry over here. So, um, as you enter this area, a number of the guardians can reactivate. And there's supposed to be a cutscene about it, like where you walk in and the cutscene plays and shows you, oh, these things might actually reactivate. You need to be careful of them. Um, you kind of don't need to, though. You can just kind of go around back and climb over and never activate that little cutscene. But we are going to activate it, because it's fun. Hello. Oh, he mad. So I'm not 100% enough confident in my parrying skills right now who want to take the probable death, or the certain death, that comes from failing a <laughs> parry. <laughs> Yay, Nintendo Switch shirt! <laughs> Don't need that. So we'll just leave that Guardian alone. Although you can kill them. Like, if, if you reflect a single energy blast back at them. I believe that usually kills uh, the stationary guardians, even on master mode, if I remember correctly, anyway. ba -doom. Anyway, all the monks say the same thing when you get down here. But this guy's Jeep Jabaij. 
Give me bombs. Thank you. That's hardly a secret, honestly, game. Let's see, can I pick up a new weapon? Yes, I can, just barely. Here the game demonstrates in no uncertain terms what exactly what it is it wants you to do. We physics engine. the last of the runes, just in time to probably put an end to the Great Plateau, mostly. With this, I've now acquired all of the spirit orbs from the shrines on this plateau. <laughs> oh, extraordinary. That means it is finally time. Link, it is finally time for me to tell you everything. But first... Imagine an X on your map, with the four shrines as the end point. Find the spot where those lines intersect. I shall wait for you there. That would be the Temple of Time. Do you understand? Where the two lines connecting the shrine would cross, there I will be waiting. Jinkies! A g -g 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 ghost! Anyway, uh. See, I think there's a Korok around here somewhere. Or am I remembering wrong? I may be remembering wrong. Oh well, doesn't matter. That one's active too, by the way. <laughs> Just messing with it. Hmm. Not quite far enough. Thank you. 
can't remember if that one's active. It might be. Nope. It's dead. Good. Because I want the screws. So the way the game works, by the way, is that until you have the paraglider, you quite literally cannot get off the Great Plateau. Like, speedrunners have been trying for a long time to figure out exactly how to get Link um, off the plateau without having to go through the whole rigmarole of obtaining all four runes and yada 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 because, well, they want to go fast and obtaining the runes is slow. But it turns out that <laughs> Nintendo was kind of wise to them, I think, because what they've done is they've essentially created a death plane, like a, um, an area that in where if you intersect it with your character, you will die that spans the entirety of Hyrule. Like, no matter how far you fling yourself, you will not be able to fling yourself away from the Great Plateau far enough that you won't fall into the Death Plane and respawn outside of the uh, Shrine of Resurrection. Presumably 100 years later again. <laughs> After dying in a stupid way. Still, speedrunners have found plenty of ways to get to Hyrule Castle real quick once they have the paraglider and to beat Ganon, like, in in less time than it will... That, substantially less time than it will take you to watch this one video. <laughs> Which is terribly impressive. That reminds me, I'm looking forward to GDQ this year. I'm so looking forward to it. You who have conquered the shrines and claimed their spirit orbs, I can offer you great power. It appears you have claimed four spirit orbs. In exchange for four spirit orbs, I will amplify your being. So tell me what it is that you desire. Heart container, please. We're going to start by prioritizing health. Mostly because so many of the enemies we encounter will do enough damage to one-hit kill me. Um... Especially, like, early on before I can upgrade uh, my armor. So, uh... Oh, hello. So health is a priority right now. Uh, the blessing of the goddess has made you that much more resilient, I see. Here I am. Get up here, quickly. The song of time, but shattered and fragmented, like Hyrule itself. What's up? Done there, young one. Now then, the time has come to show you who I truly am. I was King Rome Bosphoramus Hyrule. I was the last leader of Hyrule, a kingdom which no longer exists. <sighs> There's the finishing the calamity was merciless. It devastated everything in its path. Lo, a century ago. It was then that my life was taken away from me. And since that time, here I have remained in spirit form. I did not think it wise to overwhelm you while your memory was still fragile. So rather than that, I thought it best to assume a temporary form. Forgive me. I think you are now ready. Ready to hear what happened 100 years ago. To know Calamity Ganon's true form, 
One must know the story from an age long past. The Demon King was born into this kingdom, but his transformation into malice created the horror you see now. Stories of Ganon were passed from generation to generation in the form of legends and fairy tales. But there was also a prophecy. The signs of a resurrection of Calamity Ganon are clear, and the power to oppose it lies dormant beneath the ground. We decided to heed the prophecy and began excavating large areas of land. It wasn't long before we discovered several ancient relics made by the hands of our distant ancestors. These relics, the Divine Beasts, were giant machines piloted by warriors. We also found the Guardians, an army of mechanical soldiers who fought autonomously. This coincided with ancient legends oft repeated throughout our land. We also learned of a princess with a sacred power and her appointed knight chosen by the sword that seals the darkness. It was they who sealed Ganon away using the power of these ancient relics. One hundred years ago, there was a princess set to inherit a sacred power and a skilled knight at her side. It was clear that we must follow our ancestors' path. We selected four skilled individuals from across Hyrule and tasked them with the duty of piloting the Divine Beasts. With the princess as their commander, we dubbed these pilots Champions, a name that would solidify their unique bond. The princess, her appointed knight, and the rest of the champions were on the brink of sealing away Ganon. But nay. Ganon was cunning, and he responded with a plan beyond our imagining. Deep below Hyrule Castle, seize control of the Guardians and the Divine Beasts, and turn them against us. The champions lost their lives, those residing in the castle as well. The appointed knight, gravely wounded, collapsed while defending the princess. And thus, the kingdom of Hyrule was devastated absolutely by Calamity Ganon. However, the princess survived to face Ganon alone. Link, you are our final help. The fate of Hyrule rests with you. That princess was my own daughter. My dear Zelda. And the courageous knight who protected her right up to the very end. That knight was none other than you, Link. You fought valiantly when your fate took an unfortunate turn. And then you were taken to the Shrine of Resurrection. Here you now stand, revitalized 100 years later. The words of guidance you have been hearing since your awakening are from Princess Zelda herself. Even now, as she works to restrain Ganon from within Hyrule Castle, she calls out for your help. However, my daughter's power will soon be exhausted. Once that happens, Ganon will freely regenerate himself, and nothing will stop him from consuming our land. Considering that I could not save my own kingdom, I have no right to ask this of you, Link. But I am powerless here. You must save her, my daughter, and do whatever it takes to annihilate Ganon. Somehow, Ganon has maintained control over all four divine beasts, 
as well as those guardians swarming around Hyrule Castle. I believe it would be quite reckless for you to head directly to the castle at this point. I suggest that you make your way east out to one of the villages in the wilderness. Follow the road out to Kakariko Village. There you will find the Elder Impa. She will tell you more about the path that lies ahead. Consult the map on your Shiga slate for the precise location of Kakariko Village. Make your way past the twin summits of the dueling peaks. From there, follow the road as it proceeds north. Hmm. Go on. Here is the paraglider, just as I promised. Hooray! With that, we should be able to safely fly off the cliffs surrounding this area. And uh, I think that's it. <laughs> I've told you everything I can. Link, you must say Iru. I'll give it my best shot. And now, finally. We are free to leave the Great Plateau. The Death Plane that has surrounded uh, the place is now dispelled, which means you can finally go and do such things as you wish. But before we head to Dueling Peaks, I have another destination in mind. Just a little special foreknowledge picked up from my many hours playing this game. Well, not that special really, but it's something. Here it is. Hyrule. Just waiting for us. And it'll have to wait a little bit longer. But if you'd like to join me on further adventures through the wild of of Breath of the Wild, then hit the like, comment, and subscribe buttons down below. Because of, you know, algorithm reasons. It's it's how you'll know when the next video is coming. And we actually managed to get this in right around the two-hour mark, which is lovely. So, yeah. Um, thank you very much for watching. Please remember to wash your hands and wear a mask. Oh, also, I have a Patreon, a merchandise store, and a tip jar, and memberships are available on this channel. I should I should say that. But remember to wear a mask and wash your hands. And try to act in solidarity with those who are working hard right now to try and make the world a better place.